In this video, we're going to talk about the differential input stage amplifier. This is the most common and um, commonly used um, block in a chip design. It's everywhere. Um, it's better to spend a little bit of time to understand it. So, um, the it has two stages. On the left is the uh, differential input stage. It sends the voltage difference between these two nodes and then gain it up, put it out here. And then the second stage is the common source um, stage. Input stage is the M7 transistor here. So if you only have the the first stage, its gain is about, I'll say it depends, uh, I'll say about 100 or 200. It's only 40 dB or so. It's most uh, probably is not enough for many applications. So you need a second stage to add a little more gains to increase the total gain up to uh, the total gain to 60 dB plus. So when you look at the small signal gains, essentially that's the that's the um, gain of first stage GM2 multiplied by the output resistance here, which is uh, R4 in parallel with R2. That's the first stage, the first differential stage gain and then after that that's the common source again it's gm7 multiplied by uh, 7 and in parallel with r8 here this one is the compensation cap um, as an amplifier uh, you, most of the time need to be unigain stable so you need a compensation cap over there but for this moment uh, let's uh, Let's just forget about the cap. So, without the uh, RC compensation, this is uh, a comparators, right? So as you can see that the uh, when this node voltage is higher than that, this one goes up, down, goes up. So the output gonna go up, right? If the difference between these two is so big, um, the output gonna rail either to VDD or to ground. And one the other thing need, it's worth to mention is other than the um, for for the input offset, other than the random input offset, random mismatch input offset here because of these two guys, there's also systematic input offset. Check the Raza V book, you know you're gonna know what I'm talking about here. Before we go into the um, details of uh, Differential amplifier compensation network. Let's talk about some of the basics about the frequency response. So the following rules are not 100% correct scientifically, but it does help you to to understand the frequency response of a circuit quickly without um, too much of a mass here. So when you look at a circuit, if you notice along the circuit, you're going to see a lot of nodes. Nodes in a circuit actually according to Razov's book, um, I think it's pretty helpful to understand that way, correspond to the poles in the frequency domain. And you should pay more attention to the high impedance nodes because those nodes actually introduce low frequency poles and cause major time delays or phase delays here because of the big RC time constant. So that's for poles. And also there are zeros. Zeros essentially are, are correspond to the case where the signals are fast forwarded uh, along the way. So for the zeros, there are two types of zeros. One is the left hand zeros, LHZ. Those are usually good zeros. So that corresponds to the case that the, the correct the, the signals with the correct phase are fast forwarded. There's another type of a um, zero, which is a right-hand zero, which that is really bad. That corresponds to the case of um, fast forwarding of the wrong signals, the signals wrong with uh, the wrong phase. So a pole can cause um, 90 degree phase, phase delay, while zero causes minus 90 degree phase delay. Excuse me. <coughs> so when a system has a uh, from input to output has too much uh, phase shift let's say 
more than 180 degree phase shift before it can diminish below 0 dB. We will say the system actually is not stable. So now let's take a look at the compensation cap here. So let's say without the compensation cap for now, right? Along the signal chain, there are two high impedance nodes. One is F, and the other one is out. For the node F, there are, there are, you know, when looking to the node F, there's a an upper resistance that's out of this M4 in parallel with the, the, the out of uh, this M2 here. And also, uh, that's the resistance. The capacitance, it's more from the gate capacitor from the, the, the M7, the drain source capacitor, the, the drain capacitance from the M4, M2. So that's, if you add them up, that's about tens of a fenta. So there's a pole at the F node in that range. Now let's go to the output. That's about the same case here. So when the output, when you look at the impedance, that's out of the, this uh, M7 transistor in parallel with the out of uh, M8 transistors. And when you look at the capacitance, it's also about in the range of a tens of fenters because of um, the drain capacitor from M7, M8, plus a little bit loading from the downstream device. So as you can see, the uh, these two poles are pretty close, right, pretty close. One pole costs 90 degree phase shift, two poles 180 degrees. It's already too much. Now let's do a frequency plot comparison. Um, this, uh, the upper part is, I believe is a phase delay. This is again degrading. This is again, this is the phase. So um, the blue curve here is the, uh, the case without the compensation cap, while the green one is the one with compensation cap, right? Apparently with the, with the case without the compensation cap, the the first pole and the second pole, uh, upper pole and also the pole at the, the, the F, is pretty close. It's two decades away, a little more than two decades away. After composition, wow, we'll see that there actually is a one, two, three, four, five, almost four to five decades away. So that's what we call pole splitting. Thank you for watching. If you like our video, please subscribe our channel.